All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today I just wanted to take a couple minutes and talk a little bit about choosing the right material, the right container to use as an aquaponics grow bed. Um, as uh, for those of you who've been following along with my system, you know that I'm using these white 55 gallon drums, these plastic drums. Uh, these have worked out excellent, and uh, I highly recommend these as a good small scale indoor or outdoor um, solution for uh, grow beds. Um, another, a couple of reasons why I chose this was they're cheap, number one. I was able to pick up these on Craigslist for about 10 bucks a piece, uh, split them in half. That makes $5 for each grow bed, which is pretty cheap. Um, the other advantages is that I, I use these for my sump tank, I use it for my fish tank, so I was able to pick up a bunch of them and use them to create the whole system, uh, which is very nice. So that was obviously uh, um, one of the big reasons why I chose these. They're also really durable. Uh, this plastic is pretty hard, they're pretty tough, so they don't bend and bow when you fill them up with gravel or rock or uh, baked clay or whatever you're gonna use. They hold their shape pretty well. Um, they're pretty sturdy. They're easy to build a frame around because they're pretty rigid. So um, that was, you know, a lot of the reasons why I went with these barrels. Now you have a couple other options. Uh, these I've seen people use before as well. This is a, uh, I think this was about $15. These are uh, like cement mixing uh, trays. Um, they're a little bit thinner and a little bit less rigid. Um, but they would work great. I mean, they're about the same, they hold about the same amount of rock as a, as a barrel would. Um, you know, this is really a good solution. This would be pretty easy to build a frame around also. And so um, if you're looking at to use these for grow beds, I think that would be, would be a great um, idea. The other option that's pretty common is to use pond liner. Um, you can get those small uh, fish pond liners in that. Uh, you can get big rolls of that plastic. Um, create a, a frame with a two by fours or whatever you want to use, line it with that pond liner, and then fill it up with your with your media. Um, I haven't personally tried that, but some disadvantages I could see would be there is a chance that the pond liner can uh, you know be, get thin and wear down, especially if a lot of gravel moving around on it. You might get holes in it. Um, it'd be harder to uh, make your termination points like for bell siphons and, and piping going through and things like that. Um, but it's probably cheaper to build larger grow beds if you wanted to do that with the pond liner. So that's an advantage of that. Um, I've seen other people use trash cans. I've seen people use Rubbermaid totes and tubs. Um, you know, anything that'll hold water or hold, you know, your rocket will pretty much work. A couple things that you want to be aware of. There are different types of plastic out there. Some is rated as a food grade plastic, meaning that it, it's not supposed to leach chemicals into your, into your food. Um, and that's something you want to make sure that whatever you're using is a food safe plastic. Um, I'll put in the description the different types of plastic that you can use. Um, there's a few different ratings and I'll take you in close on these two items here and just show you how to find that rating and um, what these ones are made out of. I just found this little guy tagging along on the barrel here. This is a little praying mantis. Um, he's a pretty big one actually. We have these around in the summertime, usually about this time of year in August and September. It seems like they pop out and they're predators, so they'll catch other bugs and hopefully pests of sorts and kill them. But uh, pretty cool. Just figured I'd share my little friend here that's been hanging out during the video. All right, so this is just an example. This is on the bottom of that uh, plastic cement uh, mixing tray. Um, this has a PP rating here. Uh, or type of plastic and the number five recycling symbol. This is polypropylene um, And this is a food safe or food grade type of plastic. So this would be safe to use All right, this one's a little bit harder to see here because it's white on white, but this is H D P E And this is another type of food grade plastic number two recycling symbol here um, uh, this is what most of these barrels, white or blue uh, barrels, are made out of, and so this is a food grade plastic. Now, one thing to think about when you're looking for these plastic barrels, um, this particular type of barrel here had some type of a bleach cleaner in it, um, which is not a big deal. I washed it out very well, and um, you know that's something that we use to clean food surfaces and kitchen things all the time. So I didn't have a problem with what was in this barrel. 
um, but these barrels can contain different types of cleaners and other things that you may not want to you know want to use um, so you always want to ask what was in the barrel before you uh, before you buy it um, a lot of times they'll have labels on them and tell you but you want to make sure it's not something toxic or some kind of crazy chemical that uh, you might not be able to wash out well enough uh, or something like that most of the blue barrels were actually used for food product so um, like Pepsi or Coke syrups or other things like that um, normally in those blue ones so but the white ones here um, they have a lot of different purposes so but the plastic type HDPE is another one of those food safe plastics okay so we're down here in the aquaponics garden and I just thought I would kind of run through um, why I chose these barrels and kind of how I have them set up in this system. One of the things that I forgot to mention and probably the elephant in the room is um, IBC totes. A lot of people are using IBC totes and IBC totes are an excellent um, resource for aquaponics grow beds and fish tanks and all kinds of things. However, they are quite a bit more expensive and a little bit harder to find. So if you're looking at doing an indoor set, a setup or system, you're probably not going to use an IBC tote just because they're kind of hard to get inside, um, unless you're in a garage or something like that, or a greenhouse or a pole barn. Um, but if you're doing an outdoor system, IBC totes are awesome, especially for a larger system. If you want to grow larger fish or more fish, um, great, uh, great resource. So um, I, I didn't mean to exclude that earlier. I was thinking more on a small scale. But what I've used here is... Um, the 55 gallon drums and you can see that I've cut them two different ways now I started with the barrels cut this way because I thought that I would um, want to use these bungs as maybe a, a drain of some sort or something like that um, the, the uh, bungs that come on these these barrels there's a three quarter inch threaded fitting in here you can just drill this out and you can screw a PVC fitting right in here um, or this whole bung comes off and you can screw a male uh, threaded two inch PVC adapter right into that so they're very handy to have, and I may end up experimenting with an exter external bell siphon of some sort um, off of these down the road, but um, it is a little harder to cut them this way. You have to measure and uh, draw an equal line across the barrel, whereas if you cut them this way, there's a seam that goes all the way around the barrel, and you just take a circular saw, sawzall, jigsaw, whatever you want to use, and just rip right along that line. It's already there. They're, it's very quick and easy, and uh, that's what I'll probably do. Um, you know it, it, just like I did with these two here uh, to if I expand the system so um, just quicker quicker and easier and you come out with two exact perfect halves so um, this one here actually you can see I had to prop it up on this side because this is this half ended up being a little shorter than this half so they weren't exact um, hard to measure uh, that way but uh, to cut but these have been working great um, one of the reasons that I like these again is because they are very rigid. The plastic is, is very, very durable. Um, even full of rock, these really don't barely bow out at all. They're very hard, which is, which is nice. I'm not worried about them cracking. I'm not worried about them breaking. There's a lot of weight in there. Um, and I was able to build some pretty basic support structure for the uh, barrels themselves. And basically I just have, you know, two by fours running underneath them here to show you from the side better um, under each barrel I just have two two by fours and that's holding up the bottom of the barrel and then I also have the top of the barrel here screwed right in along the side to the support two by fours on the side so um, these work are working very very well for me um, again I got these for about ten dollars a piece which makes each one of five dollars so very cheap um, I'm going to put a link in the description to um, some resources on types of plastic. If you're interested in looking at other types of grow beds, you can uh, you know, look around and, and see whatever you find. Um, I've seen people use garbage cans. I don't know what type of plastic those are. I've seen people use a lot of different things. So, you know, be creative, but check that type of plastic and make sure it's not something that's going to be leaching some type of chemical into the water. You don't want that for your fish or for the food you're growing. So um, I will put the, the types of plastic that are food grade and some links to resources about that for you. Um, this will be part of a series that will be continuing on if you, um, on kind of the basics of aquaponics and 
some things that I found throughout the having this system here. So if you're interested in, in that, please subscribe to the channel. I will be releasing more um, aquaponics kind of basics or um, educational type videos that have to do with how to build a system and some of the choices that you have during the, during the uh, design process. So please throw some comments down below if you have any other suggestions or ideas of things that you're using. If you have an aquaponic system or questions, please throw questions below in the comment section as well. I will try to answer every single one of those if I can. Um, hit video, uh, hit the thumbs up for the video if you enjoyed it or found it informational. I always do appreciate that. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.